Hi, my name is Jeff Long, and in this WP Tuts Plus video screencast, I'm going to show you how to add clickable icons in your sidebar of your WordPress website. And as some of you may know, there are several ways to accomplish this. So we'll go over the simple way to do it, and then the, the more customized way, and the way that I would recommend, especially if you want to have a website that's a little bit uh, different or set apart from everybody else. So I have just a basic uh, WordPress install here using the 2011 theme. And uh, here are some buttons that I created. So a Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook button. And I'll show you how to do that. But above it, I have a, uh, a plugin that I've used. And again, this will do it pretty quickly, pretty simply. Uh, and I would recommend that. But uh, to do the bottom part, the customized one, I think just set your website apart from other people, other companies, other websites, and it's what I would highly recommend. You know, there are a lot of plugins that you can use uh, that will put the social sharing buttons on the sidebar widgets, on the um, side of your website. It'll pop out, it'll hover, it'll float, it'll go above the post, below the post, your pages, everything you could possibly want. Uh, there are some that go in the header, but I think putting them, you know, customizing them on your own site is a great option. So the one I want to show you is the plugin called Social Media Widget. If you check the WordPress plugin repository, you will find Social Media Widget. I already have it installed, but you can install it yourself. And again, there are countless uh, options, but this one just makes it simple, easy, and so I'll show you how to do that. The next step is to go into your appearance and widgets, and I've already done this, so I'm just going to open it up, but you can drag the social media widget into your sidebar. You can pick whatever sidebar, um, footer area sidebar you want, whatever your theme supports, you can drag that in there, and you have a ton of options. So I have my link just going to Facebook.com right now. Uh, there's a Google Plus one, there's Twitter, and you can see just how many there are. There's LinkedIn, um, you can do images and video, music and audio, business, blogging, social news, and then custom. And so there, this is a great way to customize yours, and you can customize your social media buttons and, and services that you use. And you can go ahead click save and that will go on your site just like this. So it kinda has a, a nice hover effect where it um, shows transparency when you hover over it which is really nice but again I wanna show you how to create your own custom buttons and some of you you know you wanna create these yourself you want to in Photoshop do that uh, Twitter, Facebook actually offer their own logos and, and different things you can use. And always read terms of service before you use anybody's logos or designs. Just know what you're able to use it on and what you're not able to use it on. In fact, there are a lot of free icons that you can get online just by doing a Google, Google search for social media icons. And again, same thing with these. Uh, any free ones you get, make sure you read the terms of service. Don't just, you know, steal other people's work. That is a big no-no. And you can buy plenty of logos on different sites as well. But I found some logos that I'm going to use. And the key here is, you know, you can find logos that are huge, you know, uh, print quality logos, icons, I wouldn't recommend using those. Make sure you, you know roughly the size of your sidebar logo, or excuse me, your sidebar area. So my sidebar is roughly uh, about 200 pixels wide, maybe a little bit wider, maybe a little bit smaller. I could go in the code and look, but that's roughly what it is. And so whenever you're designing logos, you know, you want to make sure you know how many social icons you're putting in your sidebar just because you don't want to have huge images in this small space. And the easiest way to know how you know wide your sidebar is is if you're using Chrome or Firefox or some great add-ons and and things that have um, measuring capabilities. So here in Chrome I have a measure it add-on 
And usually what I do, you know, when I want to measure uh, the width of a sidebar is I just do a brief estimation. So I click the button and I start from one edge, I drag to the other. And that's probably about 405 to 410 pixels wide. And you can do that on your site, whatever your theme looks like. Maybe it's, you know, 150 pixels wide up to 400 pixels wide. So whether you're using the 2011 theme, your own custom theme, or a theme you've purchased, you should be able to easily figure out how wide your sidebar widget area is, and then you can determine how large your custom social media icon should be. So I have a Twitter logo, a Facebook logo, a LinkedIn logo. They're 48 pixels by 48 pixels square. They have a transparent background. In fact, if I hide that you can see the transparent background and I'm gonna save that out as a PNG file just so it has that transparent background and I've already done that so let's go to my site and let's create a new blog post where all the fun happens I've created my uh, social media icons in Photoshop I've exported them in you know the the format that I want uh, you can upload them through the media uploader. So you can drag files or select files and upload them. I've already uploaded several. And let's start off with Twitter. And I want to insert this into the post. And I want my alignment to be none. And I'm going to click the space bar two times. And the reason I press the space bar two times is I want, you know, just a little bit of a gap in between the icons. So you might want just one space or three spaces or whatever that is. For this example, I'll just click the space bar two times in between each of these icons just to give it a little bit of separation. And let's click the media uploader again. And I'm going to go to my media library again because I've already uploaded these. And let's click my Facebook. I'm just going to insert this into the post for now. Press the space bar twice. And let's do one more. Let's do let's do a LinkedIn button. Insert that into the post. Now there's a couple of things I generally do. The first one, and let's start with Twitter, is I click this edit image button. And I could have done this, you know, when I inserted each one of these. Uh, I want to make this a little bit smaller. 48 by 48, I know won't fit in my sidebar widget. So some of your sidebars might be, you know, 150 pixels wide or 200 or 250 you'll have to know what your WordPress theme allows for. So I'm going to make this 80%. And the first thing here is the title. And I would highly recommend for SEO purposes, for search engine, uh, if you want the search engines to be able to read this uh, image to make that title something that's important. So your name, your business name, your Twitter handle, something that is important. So I'm just going to put WP Tuts Plus alternate text you could have a, a brief dis description so my Twitter account or you know Jeff Long's Twitter account or WP Tuts plus Twitter account just something there and then the link URL I don't want the upload link I want to put my Twitter link here so let's go and let's open up Twitter and I have WP Tuts Plus's uh, Twitter handle. So let's click update. And there we go. And let's do the same for Facebook. We're going to make this a little smaller. And for you, you might not need to adjust this. You know, again, as I said in, in the Photoshop part, try to know exactly how large you need to make it before you get into WordPress. That'll make your site faster, you know, so you don't have some huge social media icon that's just bogging down your site. So I would recommend it, do that in Photoshop and then in WordPress you won't need to. But I wanted to show you how to do that. So I'm inserting the links for Facebook in here and click update. And again, you can do this with any uh, clickable link, clickable icon for your social media buttons. And, and this is what separates the uh, beginners from the pros is they know that they can put clickable icons on their site and it will direct people, direct the user to, you know, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. And that is such 
a huge thing. So for this one, I'm just going to put LinkedIn.com, click update. So there you go. That is how to add your buttons to this post. Now, if you're a beginner, you probably stay in this visual tab, and that's fine, you know, as a beginner. The HTML tab is where you can view what that code is doing and, and what it's saying. So let's click the tab here. So let's kind of go over this. The first button was a Twitter button, and that button or that icon references our Twitter ID. So there's our Twitter link. When we click that icon, it'll go to our, the Twitter account. It says that there's no alignment. Remember, we didn't want it centered or left aligned, right aligned. We wanted none. And our width is 38 pixels high by 38 pixels wide. Same thing with our Facebook. It looks the exact same. Again, 38 pixels wide, 38 pixels high. Our LinkedIn button just references the LinkedIn.com site, not our personal you know, profile or anything, which I would highly recommend. Put your personal profile in there. And it also is 38 pixels wide by 38 pixels high. Now, I would highly recommend that all your social media icons, your buttons, whatever you want to call them, are the same size. If you have some bigger, some smaller, some wide, some tall, some, you know, this and that, it's really going to be difficult, especially if you're a beginner, to know how to adjust those buttons, those icons. So I would recommend do that in Photoshop. Again, then in, in WordPress, it's going to be a lot easier. Let's go back to our HTML tab. Let's select everything. And I mean everything. Notice how I missed that. Let's start over. Select everything. Click Copy. And the last step I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as a draft. All right, the next step, let's go to Appearance and Widgets and open up your widget area. And I'm going to delete this old one. And you're going to drag the text, the arbitrary text or HTML, up into your sidebar. And let's just title this, Follow Me Here. And all you want to do is paste in this HTML code. WordPress automatically knows because this uh, widget is for text, for HTML or text. And let's just click the Save button. All right, let's go to our website. Let's click Refresh. And there you go. There are our three buttons. If I click the Twitter button, it goes to the Twitter page. If I go to the Facebook button, it opens up the Facebook page. And if I go to the LinkedIn button, it goes to LinkedIn.com. So let's go back to my sidebar. I'm going to delete this one that everybody can you know, get a hold of because I want my custom buttons here. All right, there we go. Looking good now. One thing I don't like is how there's this box around it. See this box here? And there's all this spacing in here. That's because in the CSS file, and we're getting more intermediate advanced level here, uh, that's in the CSS file, this is padding. There's some padding there that sets that apart. So let's dive even further into the code and let's change that. Now, I'm going to switch browsers. I'm here in Firefox, and there's a great plugin for Firefox called Firebug. So let's open up Firebug, and Firebug will show me where in the CSS uh, we can manipulate this. So let's click on the inspector. And it tells me that the information is right here. So there's a, a one pixel border of this solid color. So it's that gray color. And then there's padding, six pixels of padding all around. That's what gets um, this, this border and then the buffer or the padding uh, with the logo. So let's go to the admin area and under appearance go all the way down to editor. And make sure you're under the theme that your website is using. So I'm using the 2011 theme. So we're going to adjust the CSS and all CSS does is it gives the look to your website. So 
don't get scared by all the stuff we're going to dive into. I'm just going to show you one aspect. Now, I would always recommend, especially if you're new to CSS, if you're new to web design, to HTML, to always back up your website before going into the CSS uh, files, especially if you're doing anything that you're uncomfortable with, that you're not sure about. Back up your website so if you make a mistake, you can have it back up and running. I'm going to scroll way down to find what I'm looking for here. So here is the CSS, the code that I want to change for the padding and for this border. And I know that I want to actually get rid of this entire piece of code. So I just delete it. And maybe I, just, I want the padding to be 2. All right, two pixels. Let's click the update button and go to our website. Let's refresh it. And there we go. We don't have that border anymore. And so somebody can just click the button, go to the site. In fact, if you don't want any border or any, excuse me, any padding, you can just delete that altogether and click update. So I just deleted that border and the padding. Let's go to our site. Let's refresh it. And there we go. Whenever I hover on these, there's no padding, there's no border. That looks really nice. So that is a tutorial on how to upload your social media icons, how to make them clickable so they go to the right social media account that you want them to, and then how to add them to your website. We even went a little bit further, a little bit deeper on how to change the CSS code. You know, if there's some things that you don't like on your theme, that's how you can change it by using Firebug with Firefox, then digging into the code, finding that same code, uh, modifying it, and then getting the results that you want. And that's how the pros add clickable icons, clickable buttons on their website in their sidebar, in their header, on their site, anywhere, is by doing the steps that I just showed you.